Proudly, we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station to bring you this story, as proudly we hail the United States Army. Our story today is entitled, An Officer and a Gentleman. This is the story of a professional soldier, Ken Larrabee, and of how he comes to face a decision that changes his life and his career as a man of arms. But first, young men and women, now is the time to consider the Army's Reserved for You training program. Here's how it works. You check the school catalog listing the technical courses available. There are more than 150 to choose from. Select two and file an application. If you're accepted, you'll receive a written guarantee from the Adjutant General of the Army or the Commanding General of the Training Division concerned. Then, the decision is up to you. If you're interested, you enlist and are enrolled in the course of your choice. If you change your mind, the reservation is forgotten. For complete information, visit your local United States Army recruiting station. And now, your United States Army presents the proudly we hail production, An Officer and a Gentleman. I guess everybody has some special moment in his life that he'll never forget. A wedding, maybe, or the birth of a first baby. It's different with each person, but whatever that special moment is, you can close your eyes and see the whole picture. For me, Ken Larrabee, that moment came in the month of June. June 7, 1955, that was the day. I stood in ranks with my classmates and watched the Corps of Cadets in full dress uniform as they passed in review. That day was June at the best that June can be. Not a cloud in the sky, hot as blazes. The parade ground stretched away in front of us flat and green and beyond that, behind the tall trees around Battle Monument was the river, the Hudson. Sure looked green and cool from where we stood in the sun. The sweat ran down under our collars, but we couldn't help grinning like idiots because today, after four years of sweat, and by act of Congress, we were becoming officers and gentlemen. Later in the field house, we'd get our diplomas and with them our commissions. Cadet Ken Larrabee would become Second Lieutenant Ken Larrabee, U.S. Army. I guess it's no wonder it sticks in my memory. It's only once in your lifetime that you graduate from West Point. Yep, that's how it was. June week, 1955. But it started a long time before that for me, back in 1950. It seems like a million years ago now. The Korean hassle was still going strong, and I'd just come back from over there and was assigned training recruits at a training center. Only I was Corporal Ken Larrabee then. Yes, who is it? Hey, Ken, you busy? Oh, hi, Biggers. No, come on in. Oh, here, uh... You shove that stuff over and sit down. Ah, you're getting ready for the new training cycle, huh? Uh-huh. Things will be too rushed later on. Whew. Hey, is it hot enough for you? Oh, it'll get hotter. Wait till August. Ah, uh, happy thought, yeah. We'll be right in the middle of the cycle. <laughs> Cheer up. You'll get a good tan out of it. Besides, this outdoor life's good for you. Yeah, who needs it? I'm too healthy as it is. Hey, you hear the word about Captain Johnson? No, no, nothing official. Well, this is official. He's leaving, all right. New assignment up in regiment. Training and planning is what I hear. Oh, he'll be good at it. When's he going? Tomorrow. They got to get the uh, new commanding officer in before the training cycle starts next week. He's due tomorrow. You know, Biggers, you're in the wrong outfit. With your gift for scrounging up information, you ought to be an intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> no trick to it. I just asked the first sergeant. He sounds like quite a package, too. Who, the first sergeant? The new CO. Oh. Just back from Korea. Captain. Decorated a couple of times over there, and he's a West Pointer. 
Yeah, I can see where things are going to be popping around here. Well, how do you mean? You know, I hear those West Pointers really like to go by the book. Everything just so. Oh, yeah, yeah, they sure like things sharp, all right. I've served under a couple. But then I, I've seen that approach pay off, too. You get where they're shooting live ammunition, and a little sloppy soldiering can cost you everything you've got. Hey, you sound like a West Pointer yourself. No, no, but the ones I've seen personally know they're apples. Well, good or bad, this one comes in tomorrow, and we'll see then. Oh, you didn't happen to get his name while you were spying around. Uh, yeah, Swedish name. Let's see, uh, Jorgensen. Yeah, that's it. Captain Matthew Jorgensen. <laughs> Captain Matthew Jorgensen, with an O, Sergeant. That's the way it will appear in the signature block of correspondence from the company. Very good, sir. Did you post the notice of the meeting? Yes, sir. 1,300 hours right after chow. All training personnel, with the exception of cooks, will report to the orderly room. Good enough. I'll be in my office. Let me know when everybody's here. Right, sir. Boy, this guy doesn't waste any time, I'll say that for him. Hey, I wonder what this meeting's all about. Hey, I thought you knew everything that goes on around here. All I know is what I read on the bulletin board, meeting at 1300 in the orderly room. Yeah, I wonder what kind of a guy this Jorgensen is. Uh, here's the orderly room. We'll know in a minute. Yeah, looks like everybody's already inside. Okay, let's hold it down. All right, here comes Larrabee and Biggers. That's everybody. Okay, at ease. At ease, men. Take your seats. As soon as he stepped through the door, I liked the look of Captain Jorgensen. He wasn't what you'd call a big man, but as he stood for a second, looking us over, you got that feeling you often get from a real professional soldier, a confident sense of authority that you know came from experience. I imagine most of you know already my name is Captain Jorgensen. I'll get to know each of yours before the cycle starts. I know the training record of this company. It's good. But we'll see if we can't make it still better. Monday, another group of completely green trainees will fill your barracks. Eight weeks from then, they'll either be trained soldiers, able to take care of themselves, or they won't. That will depend on you. The only way to train men is to set the example yourselves. It's the hard way, but it's the only good way. And Sergeant, you have anything to add while everyone's here? Nothing now, sir. Right. Oh, yes, one more thing. I won't be interfering with the individual training methods of any one of you unless somebody's way out of line. But if any problem comes up, you can always check with the first sergeant to see me. If I don't have an answer, we'll find out where to get it. And I think that's all, Sergeant. Hey, huh? Carry on. Right from the start, there was no doubt in anyone's mind. Whatever else the new CO was, one thing was for sure. He was a soldier. When training began, we started finding out more about this new CO of ours. I liked the way he handled the first briefing of the recruits. He had a way of giving out the straight information. No frills on it, just honest talk. All right, men, at ease. You new men have been on this post for about two weeks now. All that time has been leading up to this. The processing, the testing, all that is over for a while. For the next eight weeks, you'll be learning how to be a soldier. It'll be different from the life you've been used to at home. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, that's putting it mildly. But from here on, it's going to be even more so. And it's going to move fast. You're going to learn to soldier. And there'll come a day when you'll be glad you did. And that's all for now. I want to wish every one of you the best of luck. The captain practiced what he preached about setting an example. If the company had to be in formation by 4.45 in the morning, he was there dressed and ready at 4.30. You never knew when he'd show up to demonstrate how to handle a weapon or scale a wall. On hikes, he set the pace. And in the field, he made sure every man was fed before he ate. And then one day, I realized that he was keeping a sort of special watch on me and my second platoon. This particular day, we were in drill. It was hot. Platoon! Halt! Right! Hey! Hatties! 
Yeah. That ease means no talking. Big deal. What's your name, soldier? Barrett, isn't it? That's right, Mike Barrett. Well, that ease means you too, Barrett. Knock off the comment. You know something? This stuff gives me a pain. All right, settle down. Step out front here, soldier. How's that? Out front. Stand at attention, soldier. That's better. Now, you listen. Listen good. You're in this with all the rest of us, and you're not fouling up a whole platoon of men just because you don't feel like putting out. Is that right? Believe me, soldier, that's right. Now, fall back in ranks. Platoon, Tidge, hut! Time for a break. Go easy on the water. Okay, fall out. <laughs> Barrett. Yeah? Over here. Hey, let's move farther away from the platoon. I want to talk to you. Yeah, what about? There's no need for you to talk. You just listen. I'll make it short. I've been watching you, Barrett. The men in your squad are watching you, too. And for some reason, they tend to follow your lead. So? So you better start watching which way you lead. Like it or not, you've got that responsibility. Look, let's get this straight, huh? I didn't ask to come All here right, in the now first... knock that off. I want you to remember something, soldier. You're not a guest in this country. You're a citizen. You own a piece of it, and it's up to you to take care of what's your own. Nobody does that for you. You do it yourself. Yeah. What do you think, Barrett? The country owes you something just because you were so kind as to get yourself born here? Well, it's the other way around. Look, you, I'm just as good an American as the next guy. Maybe you are, okay. Okay, what? Show me. All you guys on your feet. Fall in on me. Okay, Barrett, fall in. I've said my piece. <laughs> Come in. Corporal Larrabee reporting the company commander has ordered, sir. Rest, Larrabee. Shut the door, will you? You're having some trouble in your platoon this morning, Larrabee? Sir? Come on, Corporal. The drill field is visible from this window. Well, sir, it's like this. I've got a man in the second squad who's a natural leader, but he's starting out on the wrong foot. Now, I'm satisfied this man is just a hothead who needs a little cooling, sir. Mm -hmm. And what's your idea of how to go about this cooling, Corporal? Well, sir, as I say, the men watch him. He's a leader. So much the worse if he leads wrong. That's right, sir. But I have an idea. I'd like to take a chance on this man, make him a squad leader. Let the responsibility of having men depending on him cool the temper down. Go soft with him, Corporal? No, sir, no. Go tough with him. He's tough himself. I know the kind. He'll come around. If I'm wrong, I'll know it before he does any harm. And believe me, sir, I'll straighten it out plenty fast. Corporal Larrabee, a lot of good leaders have tried the same thing. Sometimes it works. Go ahead, try your plan. I'll give you a week. You won't regret it, sir. I hold you responsible for making sure that I don't. Now, you better get back to your men. There's a formation in five minutes. Right, sir. And thanks. You are listening to the Proudly We Hail production, An Officer and a Gentleman. We'll return in just a moment for the second act. Here's something that's strictly about the birds, the whirlybirds, that is, otherwise known as helicopters. Yes, sir, the Army's aircraft mechanics who repair the helicopters are among the most important soldiers in the land, all because there aren't enough of them. Their training skills are needed on every post where Army airplanes are flown. Even if you don't have the experience but just the inclination, the Army will train you. You will be an expert after finishing the Army's highly specialized schools. See your local recruiter about your chances for enlisting as an aviation mechanic in the United States Army. You are listening to Proudly We Hail, and now we present the second act of An Officer and a Gentleman. Captain Jorgensen was as good as his word. He said nothing when I made Mike Barrett squad leader, but I knew he was watching to see how it worked out. I was myself. Three times in that first week, Barrett came to me and said he wanted no part of the job, but each time he went back to it. The responsibility was new to him, but he was learning. And then one day... Corporal, can I come in? Oh, sure, Barrett. What's on your mind? Well, I just thought I... 
Hey, what's that you're sewing? Stripes? You made sergeant. Why didn't you tell anybody? Well, as soon as I get these sewed on, they'll know. Well, son of a gun. That's all right, Sarge. <laughs> Thanks, Bert. <laughs> right. uh, but you wanted to see me about something. Uh, yeah, well, uh, well, I don't know. I, uh, I just came by to tell you thanks. Thanks? For what? Well, you know, right down the line, I figure you took the trouble to save me a lot of grief. Oh, you saved yourself a lot of grief. And there were times when I wasn't too sure whether you would or not. Sometimes I wasn't too sure myself. You sure can get some screwy ideas if you don't watch yourself, you know? Yeah, I know. But from here on in, well, anyway, I, I came to say thanks. Well, by rights, I ought to be thanking you. I don't get you. Well, the day we had that little hassle on the drill field, I got a call to report to the CO. We had a little talk, and I sort of bet my reputation on you. Ouch. Hey, you could have missed getting those stripes. Maybe, but uh, anyway, I didn't. I guess the captains decided I was right, so uh, let's just say we're even. Yeah. Well, uh, I guess I better go now. I'll see you. Right. Uh, and say, squad leader. Yeah. Uh, tell those guys of yours we got rifle inspection tomorrow. Oh, don't worry about my squad. I'll bet you a movie we get less gigs than any squad in the company. <laughs> no bet, soldier. It's just the same. You better get at it. Lights out in an hour. I gotta go. I'll see you, co Sarge. Hey, you guys, let's go. You can't lay in a sack all the time. <laughs> So, well, Sergeant Larrabee, I take it your idea about Barrett worked out, huh? Yes, sir. I'd say his squad's the sharpest in the barracks. <laughs> He'll tell you the same himself if you give him half a chance. <laughs> Good. Your whole platoon is doing well. It can always be better, mind you, but uh, they look like they might make soldiers. Yes, sir. I like the way you've handled this whole thing, Larrabee. That's why I asked you to come here today. Well, I don't quite understand, sir. You ever go to college, Larrabee? Oh, no, sir. I finished high school, but... Then my dad died. College was out of the question. Mm -hmm. Besides, I guess I liked the idea of the Army, so I joined up. Well, I've been going over your record. You didn't get the decorations recorded there without getting a lot of practical experience. You uh, planning a career in the Army? I think so, sir. Mm -hmm. How old are you? 21, last month, sir. Uh, good. Well, sir, I, I still don't quite uh, see... Larrabee, what... I asked you about college. Would you want to go now? Well, how do you mean, sir? I mean West Point. Oh, oh sir. I... Now, just a second, Sergeant. I have here AR 350-55. It says in substance that commanders are to watch for men who would make valuable officers. I've watched you long enough to be satisfied you fit the description. I think you could make it if you want to. Oh, well, this is kind of... I never gave it much thought. First off, sir, I'm three years out of high school. Well, if your application goes through... You'll be sent to a special army school to prepare for the competitive entrance examination. Oh, I, I don't know, sir. I, I've been happy in the ranks. I like my job, working right with the men. I, I just never thought of myself as an officer. Well, maybe now's the time to think about it. The army needs what you've got to give, Larrabee. You're in here because you want to be. It's a question of how much more you could give this way. Well, I'll think about it, sir, but... Well, I'll think about it. I didn't know how right I was. I didn't think about much else. It meant changing a whole pattern of life that I was comfortable in. Still, what the captain had said stuck with me. And there was something about the whole idea that scared me a little. I say, Sarge, about those patches. Sarge? What? Oh. Yeah, yeah, Bear. What's up? The cleaning patches, Sarge, for the rifles. Remember, you said you'd get some from supply. Oh, oh, sure, sure. They're right there in the wall. I can help you some. Thanks. Hey, Sarge, you want to do something about those trances you've been getting into lately, you know? You might walk under a truck or something. What? Oh, yeah, I, I'm just doing a little thinking, Mike. Well, you, you get everything you need? Right. Hey, Sarge, you feel okay? Sure, sure, I feel fine. I'll see you later, huh? Yeah, yeah, sure. See you later. <laughs> it was clear this would have to come to a head before long. I couldn't concentrate on my work. The more I thought about it, the more it scared me. I couldn't, maybe I wouldn't, put my finger on it. I couldn't get away from it even in my sleep. What? What? Hey, uh, Larrabee! Larrabee! Come on! Huh? What? Oh, oh, Lieutenant. Come on, Larrabee! Uh, you hear that, Larrabee? Time to shove off. 
Get your weapon. Weapon? They need help on Hill 47. We're going in. I'm coming, sir. I'm coming. Hey, Larrabee. Yes, sir. Where's Joe? Where's your squad leader? Oh, I don't know, sir. Keep down, Larrabee. Who's going to stop that machine gun, Lieutenant? It'll take three men. Yes, but who goes, Lieutenant? I don't know. Who would you say? You decide, Larrabee. Well, you tell me who goes, sir. I'll pass the word. We've got to silence that thing. I'll go myself, sir. Not good enough, Larrabee. Who else goes? You've got to decide quickly. No, sir. Oh, you're in command. I can't decide. Hey, Larrabee. Hey. Sarge. Come on, Sarge. Wake up, huh? huh? Come on. Huh? Baron. Baron, what's wrong? Well, you must have been dreaming. I woke up and heard you. Everything okay now? I didn't go back to sleep that night. That nightmare had brought the whole thing right out where I had to look at it. I knew what it was that had scared me about the idea of West Point. I'd seen some good officers in Korea make some really tough decisions. Decisions that took more than just guts, and I remembered thinking, I wouldn't have your job for a million bucks. That was how simple it was. You take on an officer's job, you take on his decisions along with it. Well, Larrabee, had time to think it over? Yes, sir, and then some. I don't know whether I'm coming or going. I'll tell you the truth. I'd sure like to try for the West Point opening. Well, then. At the same time, I'm worried. The fact is, sir, I don't know whether I'm cut out to be an officer. Responsibility worry you? Yeah, to be honest, I guess so, sir, in a way. I don't know. I'm used to working with a few men under me. I get the decision handed down, we carry it out, all of us. To step into the spot where you make the decision, that's pretty much of a change. Sergeant, what you're suffering from is nothing new or private. Every officer in this man's army has felt it, one time or another. No man ever made a tough decision involving the welfare of his men without wishing someone else could do it for him. That he could just receive orders or ask advice from headquarters. But... They make the decisions just the same. Yes, sir, I know. It's, it's just the that... The point is uh, this, Larrabee. It's up to the men who can lead to lead. You're one of those men. But if you want this, you must apply now. By the next application period, you'll be past the age limit. Sir, I'm going to take the first step. We'll see if I can walk as we go along. And what are the requirements? Well, as it happens, I have the necessary papers here on my desk. Yeah, you're a citizen, of course. That's right, sir. Never married. Finished high school? No criminal record? Had mathematics, English, United States history in high school? Yes, sir. Yeah, four years math and English, three years history. Well, it was a long time ago. Well, that can be remedied. All right, fill out these papers tonight. Tomorrow we'll start them through channels. Things will have to move fast from here on in. I know it's late, but once more now, the Pythagorean theorem. Yes, sir. Uh, the Pythagorean theorem states that uh, the square of the hypotenuse of a right triangle is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. Right. Here's a pencil to prove it. What's wrong with this sentence, Larrabee? This is the man I told you of. Of shouldn't be on the end, sir. It's a dangling participle. Right. Now, how about this one? Name the presidents in order, Larrabee. Again, sir? Again. Washington, George, Adams, John, Jefferson, Thomas. Larrabee, in these three weeks, you've about drained me dry. If you're not ready for the test now... I'm... Captain, I sure appreciate what you've done. These night sessions... It's all right. From here on, it's in your hands and the testing boards. Oh, uh, your acceptance came in this morning. You'll be tested with a group from the post here a week from today. Uh, you've completed the written part of the testing this morning, right, Sergeant? Yes, sir. This oral interview won't take long. We, these four officers and I just want to ask a few questions. After that, it was waiting. If I got by this, I'd get a crack at the competitive exams later on. 
90 openings for the Army, and 540 men take the test. Still, I had crossed that bridge when I came to it. Hey, Larrabee, envelope for you. Came into the orderly room. Hey, since when did first sergeant start carrying the mail? This I wanted to haul personally. It's from that testing board. Oh. Well, open it. The suspense is killing me. Cross your fingers, Sarge. You're informed... Hey. Hey, I made it, Sarge. It's the first hurdle, anyway. I'm going to school to get ready for the competitive exams. Larrabee, I hate to lose a good platoon sergeant, but I'd say it was in a good cause. If I get past those competitive examinations, sir. Well, you're on your own now. Good luck. Well, thank you, sir. Thanks for everything. Looking back, it seems like it all happened at once. Three months of school, and then the tests, the list of 90, and my name was on it. Just barely, but it was on it. It was during my four years at the point that I came to understand what Captain Jorgensen had known all along. That there's no getting around making the decisions that change our lives. There's only the necessity of finding courage to make the right ones. I didn't know it as I sat with my class in the field house, but on that graduation day in 1955, another West Pointer addressing our class 40 years after his own graduation was going to put it into words better than I ever could. Why it is that a country of individuals must train its soldiers on the basis of individual initiative, and why an army trained that way can never be defeated. Well, certainly this was a man who could speak from experience. We rose as the superintendent introduced the speaker. It gives me great pleasure to present to you the President of the United States. melody plus a good arrangement and a good performer most often determines a song's success. In drama, the play's the thing, plus, of course, good actors to deliver the lines. And in whatever your occupation, training and teamwork are the reasons for success. If you're a young man of service age, you can be trained for success in the course of your choice by enrolling now in your United States Army's new Reserved for You training program. For complete information, visit your nearest United States Army recruiting station. Remember, you get choice, not chance, from your Army recruiter. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center for the United States Army. This is Ralph Rowland inviting you to tune in this same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>